You know who it is everybody, I am back once again with another hair tutorial. Today I am doing crochet butterfly locks. I know some of you guys are watching this and wondering, didn't she already do a butterfly lock video? Yes I did, but the first time I did it I really wanted to find a crochet butterfly lock. It didn't exist at the time. So now that I've found some that are available on Amazon, I'm showing you guys where I got those and how you can install them. This is a lot faster, no wrapping required, and I'm going to show you how you can do it even if you don't know how to cornrow. By the way, if you don't know how to cornrow, I did a video on that to teach you guys. Please learn how to cornrow because it's so much easier and faster when you know how to cornrow for your crochet styles. But for those of you who just can't figure it out or just have no interest in learning how to cornrow, I'm going to show you guys what you can do. Okay, so we're starting out with freshly washed hair. I've blown it out so you'll notice that my hair is kind of straight. Here I am parting my hair. I'm gonna start with the middle part and then I'm gonna section my hair off into three sections really. So I'm doing two sections in the front. I'm gonna start, start there. If I could speak English, I'm gonna start by parting off two sections in the front as you see me doing here. And what I'm about to do is I'm gonna start parting off for individual braids. So, as I promised you guys, you do not know how to have to know how to cornrow to do this style. I'm going to show you guys a trick. Um, I've seen some people use rubber bands. I'm like anti rubber bands because I just have, you know, little trauma from my past when I tried to use rubber bands on my hair and my hair just got all tangled around them. And I don't know if that still happens. Maybe they've improved on the little black rubber bands and I don't know that. But just because that's my experience, I'm just not even going to go there and I'm just going to do braids. So as long as you know how to braid, you can do this. So I'm starting with a braid in the front. And it helps if you kind of try to braid um, backwards, if that makes sense. So like instead of braiding the braid downward, you braid it back because that's where you're going to take the braid. It's not a must. You can braid it down, forward, whatever. It'll still work out. Um, just try to make sure that the braid is in the middle of that section. Don't feel the need to braid too tight and I'll tell you why later. You wanna leave a little slack at the root. And now, as you'll see, I'm taking that first braid and I'm pulling it back into this next one right behind it. So basically, we're just faking cornrows with braids. That's all we're doing, it's really easy. Um, and these parts will help to give the illusion of actual individual locks. See how that works? And here I am doing it again. Ryan Okay, now for the more difficult part. I know for a fact that I definitely want a braid to be in the middle of this back section because I don't want to have a straight part going all the way down the middle of my head. So I wanna put a braid right behind that middle part. So in order to do that, I'm gonna start this first part kinda of off center and I'm gonna section off the side that that middle braid is gonna be on. I hope this makes sense. I'm trying my best to show you guys as much as I can. And from there, I'm just gonna start sectioning off what would be cornrows, but because this is a no cornrow video, they're gonna be braids. 
So I'm doing the same thing I did in the front and just carrying it back to the back of my head. Now one thing I did do just in case I decide to wear my hair up is I did individuals um, or I started with an individual at the nape of my neck. So down at the bottom and then once I got down to that last braid, I pulled that bottom braid up into that final braid if that makes sense. Now I wasn't able to really show you guys me working on the back of my head um, as I was doing it but here's how it looks. You'll notice that I've kind of taken the braids and tied them or braided them into like the next braid over kind of across my head but I also have those individuals at the bottom I know this part is so crazy but I couldn't see it and I, I was not about to try to waste time trying to make it perfect because at the end you're not even going to see most of this <laughs> yes that is a cornrow in the middle I gotta be honest with you guys I got to that point and I was like you know what I know how to cornrows so I'm just gonna do this one but <laughs> you guys can just do the regular um, braids. Now for the actual crochet. So at this point I'm just gonna take my locks and one thing I noticed is that the loops are kind of tight so you definitely want to kind of stretch those out before you get started. Um, I just kind of tried to stick two fingers through the loop and uh, when I hooked it I put my fingers back through the loop and use that to kind of help pull the the lock through the loop. I feel like I'm saying loop a lot and it's very hard to explain, but hopefully I'm getting my point across. So let me break this down in a close up. All I'm doing is opening my hook, inserting it into the braid. I'm twisting the loop on the lock to kind of open it up and stick my fingers through to stretch it. I'm pulling it through the braid. Again, I'm grabbing that loop and making sure I have plenty of room to pull this lock through because this lock is kind of thick. And I'm pulling it through. It's very important that you make that space in the loop for the lock to come through because otherwise you might end up getting it stuck and stretching it out and then the lock will pretty much be useless. You don't want to do that. So once again, I'm just going to speed this up. I think you guys get the gist of what I'm doing. I am doing one lock per section. In the back, I'm like a little less strict about that because I do want to make sure I'm covering up all those braids and, you know, the mess I got going on back there. But in the front, I'm doing like one lock per section so it has that individual look to it. All right, so these locks are from a company called Niseo. I may be mispronouncing that, but it's N-I-S-E-Y-O. I'll have all the links in the description box below for you to check them out, but they sell on Amazon, so you can get this hair really quick. I think I got it in like two days. This is what the lock looks like, obviously, because I have it in my head. So what I like about these locks is that they feel very sturdy. I was concerned that there may be some unraveling and everything, especially with this being a new product. You never know what you're going to get. But I must say, this is a really good quality. I like the style. I feel like there aren't too many loops. It's not too uniform. It's definitely giving you that messy, distressed look that I'm looking for. They're thick and solid throughout. They don't stretch too easily. I will say that the loop in the uh, top of the 
lock is kind of small so do make sure as I said before that you stretch that out because when you pull this through if the hole isn't big enough it does get to the point where you could potentially stretch the lock and the length will be longer than it's supposed to be. Overall, I think it's great construction, great quality. Uh, I'm pretty impressed. I honestly was like a little nervous, but I really like these locks. Um, I will say they are more stiff than when I did the locks myself. The good thing about that is I feel like they'll last longer. It comes in six packs of 12, right? Six packs of 12, so 72 locks in total. I use about five and a third of a pack, I think. This is about how much I have left. Um, so not quite a whole pack, but it was definitely enough, obviously more than enough hair. It's not super heavy. Um, like I said, the locks are a little more stiff than when I did it myself, but I like the look that it gives me um, because they're stiff. Another thing is because of the size, you want to make sure that your braids are large enough because you're going to have to slide these thick locks under your hair. So um, once I did that, it did make my braids tighter. So you might even wanna make them a little looser to give yourself space so you don't end up ripping any of your hair out. The locks are, it's actually loosened up a bit overnight, so it's not bad at all. Um, but I can only imagine if I tried to do small braids and tried to stick this under there. No, that's not gonna happen. So make sure that your braids are a good size. So, I hope that helps. Hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and the notifications bell so you don't miss my next tutorial. I plan on bringing you guys tons of hair videos. I'm about to be super, super consistent. Something I haven't done in the years that I've been on YouTube. So, um, yeah, stick around for that. I can't wait to share new styles with you guys. I'm really trying to challenge myself and try some things that I've never done before. So this should be fun. Stick around for that and I will see you guys in the next video.